Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. We can all take a seat. So my name is Kaziah Mortiz, and uh, there's my young adults group right over there. Hey. Um, so I just wanted to say welcome. What Josh said earlier, um, today is a special Sunday because we will be talking about the history of Woodbridge. Uh, for those who don't know me, I've actually been in this church since I was four years old. Crazy. My dad was, act uh, my dad, he's not, he doesn't go here anymore, he's in Thailand, but my dad was Pastor Jonathan who used to lead worship. So um, this, mm -hmm. yeah, PJ. So it has been honestly such a big blessing growing up in this church. Like I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for the love of the people here. So if it is your first time here, welcome. We want to give you a heartfelt welcome. This is a really, really good church. And wherever you are at in your spiritual walk, we just want to say we want to welcome you today. And if it is your first time, we have here this uh, was it sheet of paper for you to fill out. Oh, a connect card. So it's a connect card. And what you do is fill it out. And actually on the outside, there's um, a welcome center for you to give to them. Um, and they will be giving you a gift. So we just want to yeah, make sure that you are welcome here. And, uh, hmm? yeah. and then, so um, next week... Perfect. We'll be having an informational meeting. So if you are a member of this church, the leadership team will be sharing the vision. Uh, yeah, so we invite you to attend our informational meeting on Sunday, November 17th, right after the worship service. So we will be discussing the proposed budget for 2020. And um, on December 8th, right after the service, um, the annual, uh, so we will be having a vote for that budget. Next slide. Beautiful. So where are all the women in the house? Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Woo! Beautiful. Oh, so many beautiful faces. I love it. So on Sunday, no, Saturday, November 16th, from 9 to 11.30 a.m. in Building B, right outside, on the left-hand side, um, join us as we look at ways to have a Mary's heart during the hectic holiday season. So we will have a time of worship, a study of Mary and Martha, and take home craft that will help you relax. So moms, feel free to bring your daughters, um, your tweens and teens as well. So we sign up after the service in the lobby. Contact, where's Miss Jen? Jen Merritt. There she is over there. Hello. Um, for details, okay? And next, perfect, Thanksgiving is coming up, yay! Um, so Thanksgiving is coming up on November 24th at 12 p.m. in Building B. We'll be having a lunch. Uh, guys, this is such a beautiful opportunity to just like get to know people that we, you know, like sometimes every Sunday is like, there are people that I don't really know. It's a beautiful time to get to know more people. Um, so lunch will be $10 a plate, but yes, we welcome you. Please come. And then next one. All right. So I want to do something a little bit different. Our children, can you guys please stand up before you are excused? Parents, let's, I just want to pray over them before they leave. Um, yeah. So Children, please stand up, and parents or people who are near the kids, I, um, I want to invite you guys to just lay a hand on them, and then we'll pray, and then they can go. All right. Lord, you say in your word that you love children, um, that in the eyes of children, like they, um, they will see the kingdom of God. And Lord, I pray that you will... Just pour your spirit upon them, and I pray for the staff who sacrificially give up their time every Sundays to teach um, the kids every week. Lord, will you just bless them, and will you open up their ears, open up their hearts to just receive what it is that you want to give them this morning, Lord? And in Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful. So kids, you guys are dismissed. Ushers, we invite you to come up, and let's go ahead, worship team. Thanks.
Keziah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love it. And I just love that we're talking about the history of our church. <clears throat> you know, I remember growing up um, here, I was, she was four and I was six. And just growing up in this church together and, and just having that be just a firm foundation for growing up through the, as a teenager and in college and knowing that God has been moving even since I was a little kid. And the word says, for the word is, of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, splitting soul and spirit between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And I remember being in Awana and I can still recall the Bible verses that I've learned to this day. And how that's been so transformative for me even my highs and my lows. And as we sing this next song, as we reflect on the journey that God has brought us through, whether you've been here for many years or you've just been here in the beginning, I love how the Word of God has been so present and clear. So as we sing this next song, I actually do invite you guys to stand and let's reflect and just praise God for this Word that is true. Father everlasting, the all-creating one, and God Almighty. And through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, and Jesus our Savior.
But God, as a church, we proclaim and say we believe as you've established this church to be a light to the city and beyond, God. We remember, we reflect, and we are excited for what you are doing and will continue to do. Thank you that this church was founded on your word, your most holy word. And all God's people say, cool. We're going to have a really special service today. Stand with me as we read the Word of God this, this, this morning, as we invite the presence of God here. Book of Acts. Book of Acts chapter 4, verses 18 through 21. It says, Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine that people would say that? We command you to not speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judge. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. Acts 5, 27 through 29, the apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in the name, he said, yet you filled Jerusalem with your teachings and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. Acts 5, 40, through 41, his, sweet, his speech persuaded them, and they called the apostles in, and they had them flogged, whipped. They ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let, the, let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. <laughs> Father in heaven, we come before you this morning in the name of your amazing son, Jesus. We gather in a free country today. We're not hiding like in China or Iran, in the Middle East, around the world. Our brothers and sisters, God, worship you in silence under the radar from the government, but not here, Jesus. We're grateful for this day. We're grateful for this life, this, this physical life you've given us, the abundant life you've given us in Christ, the eternal life that we are promised. We celebrate Jesus in a great place today. Lord, we thank you, God, for this morning. We ask, Jesus, that you would send your spirit upon us today, that you would visit us this morning, Jesus, that, God, you would draw our, our hearts close to you, that you would speak deep within our lives. We pray this for your glory. We pray this in your most holy name. And all those who love Jesus would say, amen. amen. Y'all may be seated. Now, uh, I do need to say this. So today's, did you know this Veterans Day is coming up? Can I ask the veterans to stand? If you were a veteran, would you please stand and stay standing? If you're a veteran. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. 
Father, we thank you for our veterans. We thank you for these individuals in this room, God, that were drafted, that signed up. We praise you, God, for those that um, they went to basic training and they went to boot camp. They left families and served in faraway lands. They sacrificed for our benefit. And Lord, of this Veterans Day, we, we thank you for them, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that uh, they would feel appreciated this morning for what they've done and how they serve this great land. So God bless our veterans today, we ask in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Do I hear an amen to that? Amen. And you all may be seated. Thank you, guys. So, so last Sunday, what'd you think? How many people were here last Sunday? Raise your hand. What'd you think? Pretty, pretty heavy stuff, right? So last Sunday, we, we, last Sunday was a celebration of the persecuted church. The persecuted church around the world. Last Sunday, we had a, a special service here where we um, honored and celebrated um, and remembered what our brothers and sisters are doing around the world. Uh, we had Hamid. He came. Hamid is amazing. If you guys have met Susan and Hamid and, and their wife Gazla, or their daughter Gazla, they're amazing. You know, for them to, for him to, for their family to accept Christ, and then in the end they were, they were persecuted by their government, threatened that if you don't uh, renounce Christ, we're going to kill you. They actually gave him, they told him to write out his will, accept Jesus, uh, or re renounce Jesus, or we're going to kill you. Can you imagine? Has anyone ever been put in that type of position? That's heavy, right? And he was willing to die for Christ. So he shared about what it's like in Iran and what their family was going through. And we had Pastor Moses come in from India, and we're hearing about the persecution that's taking place in India. The week Sunday, we wanted to just honor the persecuted church and bring awareness to the persecuted church. Last week, I've been visiting small groups. You all need to be in a small group. You've got to be in a growth group. It is so cool to listen to a message on a Sunday morning, take the notes, and then go somewhere in the midweek, and everybody just sits and talks about the sermon. Let, let's, let's talk about it. And it was so fun just to, I visited a couple groups last week. The words that was coming out of the small groups this week was sobering. Pastor Frank, last week was sobering. Shocking. Convicting. Purifying. I thought that was an interesting word. Being here, it, it was purifying to hear that. Purifying. For me personally, when I, and I, and I talk with Hamid, and, and you know, we're, our church is so blessed to have them a part of our church. I can't tell you, just hug up, love up on, the, on Hamid and Susan. And, I mean, they are, we are so proud to have them here. I keep asking, how can we bless them more as a church family? There are religious refugees here in America. When I, when I heard this and was thought about this, I thought about Jesus' words when he says, Blessed are you when people persecute you on account of me, for great is your reward in heaven. Uh, I, I was thinking about when Jesus was talking to the Apostle Paul, when he struck Paul slash Saul down, he said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know, every time that, that Saul was persecuting Christians, Jesus says, you're persecuting me. I identify with them. They are my people. And they, if you're persecuting my, my kids, you're persecuting me. I think there's an intimacy, a specialness that comes. This are the things I thought about last week. <clears throat> Did you know that one of the fastest growing churches in the Middle East right now is in Iran? All underground. It's illegal. Fastest growing churches, one of the fastest in the Middle East is Iran. The church in China is growing exponentially, all underground, and it's all illegal. Think about that. Here's a historical truth for us this morning. Jesus' church seems to grow under persecution. Just a historical truth. Jesus' church seems to grow under persecution. Has anyone ever read the book of Acts in here? The book of Acts is an amazing book. And if you ever read the book of Acts, it's, it's a story of the beginnings of the church. And when you read 
the book of Acts, you'll find that there's portraits. It'll give portraits, the birth of the church, and this is how it began. And then you'll read right away, they're persecuted. And then you'll read, they kept growing, and the portrait goes on a bit more. And then they're persecuted again, and the church keeps getting persecuted, and the church keeps growing all through the book of Acts, all through the church. Take notes this morning. You ready? Note number one. Just, just, just think about this one. Talk about this in your growth groups this week. Jesus people, Jesus people, or the, 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 the church, right, is bolder and more purified when they are persecuted. Write that down. Tell me if I'm not right. Talk about that one this week. Take notes this morning. The church is bolder and more purified when they're persecuted. So my brother Hamid told me a while ago, he said, it's too easy to be a Christian in America. Is he right? Can you look at his perspective? Look where he came from. He says that we in here, it's too easy to be a Christian in America. Complacency is so dangerous to the church. People, complacency is so dangerous to anything. Marriages, if you grow complacent in your marriage, your marriage is going to be struggling. If you're going to grow complacent with your relationship with God, it's going to struggle. Complacency kills churches. Do you know what seems to kill complacency? Persecution. It seems to make believers bolder and more focused and more purified. I promise you this morning that the churches that are meeting in China today are not complacent. The underground church that's meeting in the Middle East today, they're not complacent. In India, This has always been the history of the church. I just want you to think about this. From the beginning, without boldness and sacrifice, the church wouldn't have survived. Without boldness and sacrifice, the church would not have survived. Think about it. If the people in the first century weren't willing to live for Jesus and if need be die for Jesus, you would have never heard about Jesus. It would have died in the first century. If the Christians in the book of Acts weren't willing to live for Jesus and if need be die for Jesus, you would have never heard the name. But we read, they knew this is what they were willing to live for and if need be die for. The church of Jesus is built on the backs of the sacrifice of others. Starting with Jesus himself. Wouldn't you all agree to that? Who starts this thing off? Doesn't he? So here's the truth. We all benefit from the sacrifice of others. Starting with this guy. Because his willing to sacrifice for you, you all benefit in here. Do I hear an amen? amen? The gospel, the good news, Jesus dies on the cross for you. You're a sinner. You fall short of the glory of Almighty God. And without his sacrifice, you can't enter heaven. But he took all your shame and guilt and sin before a holy God on himself. And he who knew no sin becomes sin on your behalf that you might become the righteousness of God. For all who believe upon his name shall be saved. He sacrifice. Right, take notes this morning. We all benefit from the sacrifice of others. We all benefit and hear from the sacrifice of others. This will be the discussion this week in small groups. All of us in here have benefited from the sacrifice of others. It's always been true. From the founding fathers of this country creating a nation that they called the Great Experiment, and in it they said, this country will have religious freedom and liberty, and look where you and I are today. We benefit from their sacrifice of the Revolutionary War, creating a nation built on religious freedoms and liberties. We benefit from the sacrifice of others. Our veterans, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. 
We benefit from the sacrifice of others. What's the old saying? Freedom is never free. You've got to fight and earn it and keep it. Our, you know, God bless our mom and dad. Has anyone in here benefited from the sacrifice of your mom and dad? Anyone? Man, they were wiping your tushy when you didn't even know it. Right? We all benefit from the sacrifice of others. And especially people, we, back, we benefit from those who walked before us with Jesus. We benefit from those who have walked before us to give us Jesus. We benefit from these people. So this morning... We thought it'd be cool. I want to tell you a story this morning, and I love this story. I'm going to take you guys on a journey this morning, and I'm going to tell you the story of this church. And you're going to hear names of people that maybe you recognize and maybe you, you won't, but uh, these are people that sacrificed for you and I that we could be here today. Uh, how old were you in 1971? Yeah. Yeah, right? Hey, I was, um, let's see, 1971, I was six. I was learning how to snow ski up in Big Bear. That's what I, that's, that's what I was doing in 1971. How old were you? Uh, what were you doing? Well, in 1971, a new city was being incorporated in Orange County called Irvine. Population, 12,000. Did y'all get that? Population, 12,000. Check these out. Here's some pictures of Irvine. See the cattle on the hill? It was a ranch. It was a ranch. Check out this one. That's Uni High School being built. That's Uni High School. Notice all the homes around it. Not. <laughs> there was a young youth pastor up in San Jose, and this guy's name was Rich Samuelson, and his wife's name was Cookie. And they began having a burden for this, this area that, down in Orange County that's filled with orange groves and a ranch. And he, and he felt a burden to plant a church here. And so he and his wife left San Jose, came down here to Irvine, and with the help of our conference, Converge, they began calling people around and saying, can you picture someday the city of Irvine is going to be this city, and it's going to need to hear about Jesus, and we want to plant a church. And so they came down here, and they began rallying some people around, and they began meeting in homes as they were casting vision for the church. And believe it or not, they incorporated Woodbridge Community Church as the second oldest church in the city of Irvine. So you want to know what the oldest one is? Sand Canyon. Has anyone been down there by Sand Canyon, right by the bus depot? That was a church set up for the El Toro Marine Base. This was, we're the, we're the second oldest church in the city of Irvine, and it was incorporated, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, and so they started a church, and it quickly began growing, began meeting in people's homes. And in 1976, people in the, that were going to this church took out mortgages on their houses to buy a piece of property on Barranca Parkway that was three acres for $165,000. This place. That was 1976. So they had a, a grass, or just a field here. And then in 1983, they had raised enough money to build on this property for the first time. And they took out a loan for $450,000 and they built this. I think these are great pictures. Do you, do, you, do you see the school district over here? And you can see the Woodbridge homes being built. And do you see the big field of nothing? That's Woodbridge Community Church. Our, our building is right there. But you don't see it, do you? <laughs> How about this one? I love this picture. Just, they're just, that's the, this, it was just an L. When I came to Woodbridge, it was just an L. The worship center, there's a few buildings, uh, uh, classroom buildings. But this is what they did in 1983. How old were you in 1983? What were you doing in 1983? So now let, let, me, let me tell you something. So in 1983, they build this church, 
and it's done, and it's growing. And if you had came to Woodbridge Community Church in the early 80s, late 80s, you would have, we would have been meeting in the, we call it the youth center right now, okay? And it, and it holds like 150 people, I think, something like that. Um, now, if you had came here in the 80s, you would have went to church with us. You would have seen that the church was mostly white, Caucasian, except there was a guy named Sam Lacanetta that came from the Philippines. And this guy loved Jesus, and he was a part of our church. And he began a, a Bible studies. As a matter of fact, I know the, Stephen Juanita, you were in their Bible study, weren't you? I know that David was in the Bible study, uh, Mr. H. And Sam started just, he was just a great Bible teacher, and he loved the Lord. And as Sam was here, people uh, from the Philippines, Filipinos, started coming. And so if you were to come to this church in the late 80s, you would have seen a mostly white church scattered with Filipinos everywhere. Okay? And that's what you would have seen in 1980, late 80s. So it was kind of cool because after a while, Pastor Sam said, you know what, I think if, if, if we created a Filipino church, we could attract more Filipinos in the city of Irvine. And so our church said, well, why don't we make you our daughter church? And so we, we gave birth to a, a daughter church called FOSI, Filipino American Church of Irvine. And they uh, broke away, and then we would meet here in the mornings, and they met here in the afternoons. And they were, we were one church, and we were, everything's doing well, right? So then in 1983, uh, Pastor Sam left, and this guy showed up. <laughs> this guy showed up. And you'll notice that uh, Stephanie is still a thought in the mind of Almighty God at the time. But Pastor Vince and Mary Beth came here, and they began pastoring uh, Fosse, our, our, our daughter church, right? And in 1992, this guy showed up. Yeah. Does he look familiar? That's, uh, so our two kids was still a thought in the mind of God. So here's my problem. So how old do I look? So, you know, I was, I was, how, babe, was I, I think we had two kids at the time. We were, we had, we had a little place there at the Willows, and someone knocked on my door one day, and I opened the door, and she said, is your mom here? <laughs> Trying to sell me something. And I said, no. That's why, so I, I started growing this just because I needed some facial hair, man. I was... It was, so I, I came as a youth pastor in 1992. Sid and I, we, I graduated from Talbot. My professor, Michael Anthony, is like, there's this church in Irvine that needs a youth pastor. Frank, you need to go. And so I became the youth pastor here in 1992. I was a youth pastor for about tw 10 years, 12 years. Became the associate pastor up until 2007. So um, it's kind of, this is what's going on, right? Everything's cool, right? So um, what else is going on here? I should say this. In, in, um, in 2004, they broke ground on this property, and I think I've got a picture. I really want you to look hard at this picture, because you probably don't know too many of these people. But Shirley Cox in the yellow hat was one of the founding members of this church. Her husband, Bill, was a chaplain in the military, Navy chaplain. They were the, one of the founding fathers of this church. And Don Norstrom to the right Everybody needs to remember his name. As a matter of fact, Don's wife, Millie, is in the back. Can we all say hello to Miss Millie back there? <laughs> Miss Millie, you're awesome. All my kids, their Sunday school teacher, Miss Millie, Miss Millie, Miss Millie, serving Jesus. They built, they were the ones that came and they, and they put the shovel in the ground as they began building this place. I need to tell you something. This was in 2004. Shirley died before this building was completed. She got cancer and passed away. I, forget, I think that's what it was. But as she was passing away, do you see this stained glass window here? It's over 100 years old. It was found in a barn, in an Amish barn in the Midwest. And when she was passing away, she said, I want to give my church a stained glass window. And she paid for this before she passed. And that belongs to our church. Every time I think of that, I think of Shirley Cox, this amazing 
woman of God, and Don, all of them. These are, these, have you ever heard the old saying, we stand on the backs of giants? That's two of them. Committed, sold out believers for Jesus that someday you'll meet in heaven. By 2006, this campus was mostly done as, as Fosse partnered with us to build this church facility. And what a great facility it is. Praise God for it. I have um, friends of mine that are pastoring in churches where they show up every morning at a high school and they got to get there about two hours early to set up chairs in the auditorium. Did anyone have to do that today? Did anybody have to show up early to set up chairs in the auditorium? We did that. This church did that as it was meeting in homes that finally met in a middle school. They, they were thinking of you when they were building this place. Taking out mortgages on homes. And giving unto the Lord. So if you were to come to this place in 2007, you would find a WCC meeting here. You would find uh, our uh, Fosse would have been meeting right after the services. I think that you guys met at one, right, Pastor Vince? And you would also find a uh, Rabbi Feldman and a Jewish congregation here. Because this is the funny thing that happened. As soon as we built this place, one day, you guys heard the story, Rabbi Feldman walks in the door and said, when did you guys do this? And then his next words to me was, God wants us to worship in this place. His, his messianic Jewish congregation. And he was right. And he was right. And so if, come on Saturday, Shuva's here, right? That's how it would have been in 2007 at this church. But something happened in 2008 that radically um, changed and made... Woodbridge what it is today. See, in, in, in 2008, I was leading a, a trip to Israel. And I've been doing that. Uh, I've been leading trips to the Holy Land ever since. Uh, since I became a, a brand new Christian. We're leading a group, by the way. I'm leading a group here in um, March of this year, two weeks. I, I love taking you to the land of Jesus. You've, you've got to walk at once. It's just incredible. And so as I was walking in the land of Jesus, as I was the teacher, Jesus was teaching me. And it was so, it was so loud. Have you ever heard the voice of God? I have never heard an audible voice of God. Have you? God bless you if you have. But there's times when God just speaks so strongly to you. And the whole time we were in Israel in 2008, I, I kept, we, we, God just kept telling me that he's the God of the nations. He's the God of all peoples. And as we were traveling all around, we would run into um, Christians from all over the world. Um, we were up in Galilee, and we ran into a group of, of Russian Christians. We, read some, and we were up in Galilee area, and we ran into a, a group of, of uh, Christians from Thailand. And, 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 and it was like so weird. And it's around Easter, so it's a lot of time of immigration and people coming for uh, pilgrimages. And so one day we were in... Um, Jerusalem, and Sarah, this amazing Messianic Jewish guide who you'll meet someday if you go with me, she says, Pastor Frank, she goes, and she, she, is, she, is, she loves Yeshua, or Jesus, and she loves her nation, and she says, Pastor Frank, Jerusalem is the center of the world, and before I could even say anything, we were sitting in, a, in an area where we were having hafuk, that's coffee, hafuk. Say, who likes hafuk? Hafuk. She, there's special hafuk. And so we're, and she goes, she goes, just listen. And all of a sudden, over there, they're speaking German. And over there, I could hear Latin. And over there, I could hear Dutch. And, and you, you start hearing languages from all over the world that have come to Israel to worship God, to worship Jesus, Right? And that was actually on this trip, and I've told this story, but it was so fascinating. We were staying at this hotel, and a bus pulled up one day, and out of this bus came about 50 people. They were all um, African, and they all were wearing white robes. You've heard this story. 
And they got off the bus, and my son uh, Jordan was with me, and he's like, Dad, what's that? I'm like, I don't know, you know? I went over to Sarah, and I go, Sarah, who are these people? She goes, oh, Pastor Frank, these are Ethiopian Baptists. And so in Ethiopia, they wear white robes every Sunday because it symbolizes that they've been washed clean in Christ. And so, but now that they're at the city of the king, they wear their white robes the whole time they're in Jerusalem because this is the place where Jesus paid it all. One of them had leprosy on her face. And I didn't want to stare, but my son did. And I said, she's our sister in Christ. One people, right? So at the end of this trip, we were at the garden tomb. And my friend Aaron Young, whose mom and dad were here for, Aaron grew up in this church, and now he's a senior pastor at church in Atlanta. We were taking um, communion, and he opened up Revelation 5 at the garden tomb. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. And in a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Who's singing that? Angels are praising. This is a worship song going on in heaven. What does that scripture teach us? about Jesus. Did y'all hear that? Preach it again. Say it again, brother. Preach it. Give us that voice. He welcomes everyone. Everyone. Our Jesus. So in Genesis it says that from Abraham one will come who will bless every nation on the earth. All peoples, all families, the promise of Messiah found in Genesis, revealed and sung about in Revelation. And here you are. The cross is what brings us all together as one people. Jesus is what brings us together as one people. We were, we were at St. Anne's Church. I, I, it was such a beautiful Byzantine church. It's, it's, it's this church. It's right outside the pools of Bethesda where Jesus would, would, uh, healed this person. And when you go there today, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful Byzantine church. When you sing in it, the acoustics are beautiful. And when you go in there, the, we walked in there as a group in 2008, and a group of Russians were singing Um, praises to Jesus, and I didn't know, I couldn't recognize the song, but it was beautiful. When they were done, we came in there, and we sang, I I wrote this down, I got to be clear, we sang um, Amazing Grace, and We Exalt Thee, we sang We Exalt Thee, and we sang Amazing Grace, and it was beautiful. When we were done singing Amazing Grace, it was weird because we were just sitting in the pew singing, and all of a sudden, a group of people, they, they were from Taiwan, they all had um, orange vests on to recognize them. Their leader had an orange flag, follow me, and they got up front, and we're like, what are they doing? And they got up front, and they sang Amazing Grace in Mandarin. And I had tears coming down my face. And afterwards, when we left there, our groups all went out. We went down the Villa de la Rosa. It's the road. They, you know, they say this is the road where Jesus took the cross. And we're walking, in the, and now in the, we're in the city of Jerusalem. It's filled with people, and, and it's crazy. And we're all, I'm trying to keep my group together, and, you know, we're cruising through the Villa de la Rosa. And I look over at this guy. I'll never forget him. I smiled at him, and he smiled at me. And I don't speak Mandarin, and he didn't speak English. But he loved Jesus. 
and I love Jesus. And we looked at each other as we're walking along, and he just smiled at me, and he went like this. And I went like this. Right? What's the lesson? Jesus comes for all people. All people. Take notes. I like it when Rabbi Feldman says that my Jesus is for you people. Him being Jewish and Jesus being Jewish. He says, my Jesus is for you people. All you non-Jews, Jesus came for you too. Isn't that beautiful? So I got to tell you this, because remember, it's 2007, 2008 at Woodbridge Community Church. And, we've, and I came home and I told Pastor Vince, I said, when we were at the garden tomb, I heard God say, worship me together. Did I, I, I didn't hear a visible voice, but I heard him say it. Worship me together. And I came back here. I said, Pastor Vince, I believe God wants us to worship together as one people again. Why not? Now we have a place big enough we could do it. And so we, are, we came together. We said, why not? Let's worship together again. So in, in August of 2008, we, we, we took the month of August and said, let's worship together. Just one people, because that's who we are. And at the end of August of 2008, we never stopped. And we became... Have you ever, have you ever had your kids move in with you, move, move back home? Because our daughter church, we just became one family and just started worshiping together again. And it's, and it's kind of funny because we thought, well, it's just going to go back the way it was back in the 80s. It's going to be this Caucasian church with, and Filipinos, and we're all going to be one people. But you know what? God did something totally, we didn't see it coming. Do you know what he did? Sonny and Mega showed up. Do you, what year did you guys come? 2009. Sonny and Mega showed up from India, right? Well, it, well your, your Indian ancestry. And they didn't, they didn't want to go to an all-Indian. They wanted to go to a church of many different nations. Uh, we didn't want to go to an all-Indian church per se. And they didn't want to go to an all-white church and feel weird. And they found this church. And they walked in the door and they said, Oh, this is cool. PJ's up there. Pastor Frank's there. This is, oh, and th this became. And they're like, we like this church. And we said, hey, every nation, tribe, and tongue. And then all of a sudden, people started coming from Japan. China. South Africa. South Africa. Iran. Ukraine. Ukraine. Colombia. Colombia. Where? Give me more. Canada. Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Where? Korea. Korea. Where? Oregon. Amen. Oregon. Oregon. I believe it, give, it gives God honor when we can come into a room. Our, our, so I'm a police chaplain, right? Our chief, um, our old chief, Dave Maggard, I can tell this, he married, uh, his wife is uh, Japanese, and he was like, Pastor Frank, he, Chaplain Frank, so that's my title. He says, do you know, Irvine, it says, we have so many nations here, but they're segregated. They're segregated in the city. You can see it in the schools. You can see it here. And he says, but when I, look, when I come into your church, I see that, we, that you, they're all one. He says, and isn't that how it should be? He says, shouldn't Jesus draw us all together as one people? If there's a place that shouldn't be segregated, it's the church. Am I right? I mean, think about it, guys. I mean, in this city right now, you, you can go to a Chinese church. You could go to a Vietnamese church. You could go to uh, a, a young white church. You could go to a young Asian church. You can go to, I mean, you can go to, this church is, I think this church gives God honor. 
Because this is a slice of heaven. This is what it's going to be like in heaven. God said, worship me together. And I'm just like, Lord, I just know you want me to. And, and this was his idea. This was his idea. It's unique. It's special. It gives God honor. The story of Woodbridge Community Church, it's an extension of a bigger picture birthed thousands of years ago before you and I were born and it's going to remain thousands of years from now, long after you and I are gone. Take one more note this morning. I want you to write this down and think about this. The church is not a building we sit in, but a movement we become a part of. Take notes. The church is not a building we sit in, but it's a movement we become a part of. Question. Why did those people sacrifice all they did to build this church, this building? Answer. They did it to bring the movement to this city, to this new city in Orange County. They did it for you and me. And that's why we have a place to worship at 5,000 Barranca Parkway. They, they knew that the movement, there was a new city that was going to be built in Orange County, and the Jesus movement needs to go to this city, and we need to be a part of it because the people that one day would be coming to Irvine need to hear about Jesus. And so they thought, we need to plant a church. And that's why you and I are here today, forward-thinking people sacrificing because of a movement that began 2,000 years ago. That church, and I, I, I came here in 92, huge heart for missions. Missions. It's always been like, this church has always had a legacy of sending out people, doing ministry, and, and, and missions work. I promise you that Shirley Cox would be so Happy to see what's going on in here today. Bill Cox. God bless Cy Young, who passed away. He would, be, to, to what God is doing here. What's the message for us today? What, what, what should you leave with here today? Veterans Sunday, right? Coming out of Persecuted Church Sunday. What's God's message for you? I think God wants you to remember that all of us in here have benefited from the sacrifice of others. If it wasn't people willing to sacrifice for the cause of Jesus, you would have never heard about him and you wouldn't be sitting in here today. Think about that. To remember, all of us in here have benefited from the sacrifice of other people. Especially the great cloud of witnesses, of saints that have gone before us, who are willing to live for Christ, and if need be, die for Christ, so the name would never be snuffed out. But they're trying to snuff out the name right now in China, in an Iran. You can't. In India, these laws that are coming out in India, targeting the church in the 21st century. For 2,000 years, people have tried to snuff out the name of Jesus. And yet, the more that the church is persecuted, the more purified they are. Is my brother right? Is the church in America too complacent? May we not be. 
may we not be. And praise the Lord that the people that came before us, they weren't complacent when they were, when they were mortgaging houses and sacrificing. So we in here today, hey, God bless those in the, that have sacrificed that we have freedoms today. The police aren't going to come in here today and say this is an unlawful assembly and you all need to leave or we're going to shoot you. You can't do that. It's illegal in this country. God bless. You all are so blessed. Do you understand? You all are so blessed. Do you understand? The baton is passed on to us. Amen? And the only thing that can keep us from being effective is if we just grow complacent. Listen to the Spirit. Listen, I want to close it. The last verse. Listen to the Spirit of the first century church. In Acts 4, 29 through 31, they've been told, if you don't stop, we're going to kill you, right? Now, Lord, consider their threats, the apostles prayed, and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. May this be our spirit. Do you see that? This is the spirit of the church. This is the spirit of the church. Lord, consider threats. Help us to speak with boldness. And God, do mighty works in the name of Jesus. I loved it. Do you remember last Sunday, Pastor Moses, we asked him in our interview, Pastor Moses, if, if the church in India is being persecuted, then why do people keep becoming Christians? Do you remember what his answer was? Did you remember that? It was profound. He says, because people's lives are changing. People's lives are changing. And they look and go, that guy that used to be beating his wife and a drunkard and a total jerk, all of a sudden his life's changed. What happened to him? He's now sit talking about Jesus. Pastor Moses says, the church keeps growing because God keeps transforming people's lives. Amen. Stir this in. Stir this in. Be grateful and be thankful. Remember. And don't be lazy. Stay focused. Stay sharp. Let me pray for you. And as we do, the worship team will be coming up. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. God, I, I, I was so excited, Lord, to talk about people that I really look up to, like Don Nordstrom. What a godly man. Thank you for his wife, Millie, and his amazing family, Lord. Lord, we thank people like uh, Bill and Shirley Cox, these amazing people that were pioneers of faith, servants of the Most High God. Lord, we recognize, Lord, that we in here are all benefit because people sacrifice for us. Jesus, we remember you, the one who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. We benefit because of your blood that was shed for us, Jesus. Lord, you told us to never forget you, and we remember you today, and we remember what you've done for us, Lord. God, we want to tell you this morning we love you back. We thank you, God, for what you do in our lives and what you've done in our lives and what you plan to do in our lives. Lord, we remember human beings that were willing to live for you and, if need be, die for you, Jesus. We remember what's going on long ago and what's going on today. Jesus, we embrace, God, your spirit here this morning, your presence with us. We embrace the movement of Jesus, and we're a part of it as your children. We joined this movement the day we said yes to Christ. God, I pr we pray that you would purify us Focus us. 
sober us. Help us to see, Jesus. Touch our eyes, I pray. This we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. As we end our service, we like to do this. On the back half, we're going to open up a time of worship. There's a song that we're going to sing called The Cause of Christ. And then we're going to roll in with a song called Build My Life Upon Christ. These are two great worship songs. And I want you to listen to these songs, make these songs prayers. The scripture says that if anyone needs a touch, physical, financial, uh, spiritual, to seek out the leaders of the church. And in James chapter 5, we like to practice that biblical mandate after the message. And so I'm going to ask for my wife to come up and stand with me and Mike and Pat to come up here and Keisha and Steph are going to be praying over here. Uh, Pastor Graham and BJ are going to be over here up in the balcony. I've got Pastor Vince and I believe we've got the Chows. And so hey, if, they're, if you're here today and you just need to, you need to bring something before the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you're just like, God, I, I want to bring something before you. We are here to pray for you. If you have a physical need, we're here to anoint you with oil and pray God's healing over your body physically. See, the church is not just an intellectual faith that we have. It's supernatural. God is with us, and God does amazing things for the cause of Christ. So if you're here today and you need a prayer, come on up and let us pray for you. And if you're in, back there and you're watching and you're singing and you see someone up here, just pray for them as one body. God, I pray for that person up there. They have a need and I just want to pray for them as a brother or sister in Christ. And let's as a church body love each other this morning. Bear one another's burdens. So I'm going to ask for the lights to be kind of turned down a little bit. And let's just worship the Lord for these next two songs. Jesus, Jesus. The only thing I want in life is to be known for love in Christ, to build his church, to love his bride. Surrender all for 
There's no fame that I desire No stature in my brother's eye I pray it's said about my life That I lived more to build your name than mine we sing this next song, I invite you just to use it as a reflection. And as we hear that challenge to not be complacent, I think there's some of you, God is inviting you to something more and special today. And maybe it's been ruminating your mind for a little bit, but I invite you just to reflect on it today. Allow God to speak to you today. That this invitation to do something amazing and unique is from God. So if you need to get prayed over for that, or if you just need to and worship. Let's pray this and sing this song together. I invite you guys to stand as we sing Build My Life. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. And worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. And worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. And only there is no one like you. There is no one beside you. So
Lord of praise. Amen, right? God is good. God is good. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And may God's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you. May God be gracious unto you. May you be purified this morning as you sit in his presence. And may God be turning up the soil of your heart so new things will grow. May he turn up your soil and water your ground that you, new, new things of the Lord would grow in your life. Closeness and intimacy, commitment, purpose. The Lord bless you, focus you, purify you, strengthen you, and direct you. God bless you. Do you realize how much he loves you? Do you really realize how much he loves you? God, help us just to stir that in. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. Hey, if you're new here this morning, we have a Meet the Pastors in Building B. If you want to come and you've never met the Pastors Church before and just hear about this church, encourage you to be part of that. Don't miss next Sunday. It's going to be an amazing, very special Sunday. Don't miss next week as we talk about where we see God heading and moving and going and leading in our church. God bless you, church. Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. And through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior.